Luciana, you have seen the European Union being created. Do you fear sometimes that you might die seeing its end? Well, of course, I am not very optimistic. I am rather pessimistic. But to be concrete, the issue of democracy does not only have to do with European institutions. Let's say that the European Union has been a pioneer in introducing what has been called uh, as the post-democracy. And this started in 1973, after the rebel years of the 1960s and the early 70s, when they said, well, democracy, we can't afford democracy. The system cannot afford democracy. Uh, the economy is a complex matter. We cannot have parliaments dealing with it. Uh, technocrats must take care of that. And this process started back then, and we are now in its full deployment, not just in Europe, also um, here at home and elsewhere. But what I wish to say, and I wish to tell Diem to pay attention to one point, because Europe has done an extraordinary operation, that of expelling the people from its structure. Of course, we know that there is no European people. We were supposed to build the European people. It was difficult, and perhaps we did not succeed. But the uh, German Constitutional Court said something extremely important. It said the European Union is not democratic because there is a lack of a sovereign people, and there is a lack of a sovereign people because we do not have the intermediate bodies that can guarantee democracy in the intermediation between the individual citizen and the state, political parties, media, trade unions, organizations. And so how did Europe solve the matter? Well, it said, OK, you do not have the people, but you have the individuals. Of course, if there is nothing left but individuals, there is really not much hope for us because we will have individual rights, but we will not have a collective subject. So if we help the process of building these intermediate bodies, these intermediate structures which do not exist, uh, at the moment, uh, th this is something that will, in fact, uh, help the European Union with the game that they're trying to play. Thank you, Luciana. If we perhaps change a microphone, because there was a little bit of a difficulty. Thanks. One, uh, yeah. to address what Luciana was saying. How do you uh, tackle the crisis of intermediary bodies in the European Union? And what is DiEM going to do in terms of reinforcing, the, uh, reinforcing those intermediary bodies? That is to say, what is going to be DiEM's approach to political parties, trade unions, and organized social movements? Uh, perhaps we start with that. First things first, the question of individuals versus the police. Once upon a time, both the left and the right confidently proclaimed that there can be no individual human outside the polis. So the individualization of the citizens is part of the disintegration of the European commons. So you're absolutely right. Where we have failed as Democrats, whether we're left or liberal, is in ensuring that the process of transferring powers from our nation states to Brussels and to Frankfurt is done in a manner where this sovereignty it doesn't go into a black hole. Unfortunately, this is what has been happening for the last few decades, especially with the creation of the Eurozone. How do we reverse it? Because the problem with the line of argument that democracy is a luxury that we can afford is exactly that which Winston Churchill outlined. 
that democracy may, may be a terrible and very expensive and, uh, system that uh, requires such very long meetings that make all of you very tired, but nevertheless is the best of all alternatives. And the reason why democracy evolved was not because we decided that it's nice. It's because without it, the decision, the politics becomes toxic and the economic outcomes become catastrophic. What do we need to do to respond to your question directly? Well, what we need to do is to create the infrastructure that we're trying to create where all those intermediary bodies, whether they're social movements, trade unions, organizations, can join forces in order to confront the European Union institutions and their particular contempt for democratic process. Effectively to say to them that this cannot go on. We will deny you the oxygen of power if you insist on power relations of the 19th century brutal kind. The whole point about constitutions is to convert power relations into political relations. The European Union has been about depoliticizing political decisions in Europe. It is disintegrated. Either it will be democratized or it will perish. Jorge, if I... If I can, can bring you in, if you, if you can respond in English, that would be amazing because it would save us time. But if you prefer Castilian, I understand it sounds much better I, than I English. I will do it in, in Spanish, so sorry. No, fine, totally fine, English totally is, fine. It's quite difficult. Sorry, <laughs> it's, my, it's my horrible role of having to keep time, yeah, which I really don't recommend to anybody best. else. Okay, um, Jorge, directly on what uh, Yanis just said, and uh, perhaps to address one of the... Uh, uh, responses that uh, we often get when uh, presenting Diem, uh, Yanis says that in nine years Europe would have to be uh, and become a fully democratized continent. And the answer is, oh, but this is madness, oh, but this is folly. Nine years is such a short time for such complex historical processes. And yet, Podemos was founded two years ago, and in two years you managed to completely upturn uh, the political dynamic and the political rhetoric in Spain, and uh, you went very close to winning elections just two months ago. So tell us, how does this work? Uh, is it true that nine years is too long if you can do this in two years? And how do you do, do okay. it? Eh, bueno, primero de todo, me gustaría decía Raymond Williams que all, el acto de comunicar Williams, es un acto de comunidad en sí mismo. Así que yo le querría dar las gracias a todas las traductoras que están haciendo... Sorry, I think you have to do it consecutively, vale. otherwise our, our interpreters will go crazy. Vale. Tienes que... Después de cada cinco minutos, para. Vale, ok. Yeah, gracias. Digo que decía un autor que se llamaba Raymond Williams que el acto de comunicar es un acto de comunidad en sí mismo. Así que yo querría Raymond agradecerles Williams. a todas las traductoras el formidable trabajo que están haciendo para que nos podamos comunicar entre todos nosotros y nosotras. Ah. I'm not a translator, but I do my best. <laughs> Seamos latinos. <laughs> eh, ¿Cómo se ha conseguido lo de Podemos? Eh, en España existen ahora mucho de lo que se llaman podemólogos, mucha gente que de repente es experta en explicar qué ha sucedido para que Podemos eh, alcance la, la cuota de poder, la, el, el éxito, digamos, que ha tenido en las elecciones. En España hay personas que creen que saben todo y saben todo sobre Podemos, creen que pueden explicar y pueden dar ideas sobre cómo fue creado, cuándo fue nacido, de dónde viene, de dónde viene. Y yo la primera respuesta siempre que, que doy, que damos, es, and, and es que no hay receta, no hay libro de storytelling, no hay ningún manual que te diga cómo ganar. No to how to win. Entonces, la idea es, en España hubo una situación de lo que llamamos crisis de régimen, que es una crisis del poder constituido. We had a crisis of constituting power. Um, it's an ongoing crisis. En un primer momento, esta crisis de régimen se manifiesta por arriba. Es decir, las élites se emancipan del pacto social alcanzado en los años 70 en España después de la dictadura militar. The first crisis comes from the power when they decide to be stop representing the, the, the citizens, the, the populations, and they stop representing them. 
son ellos los que ponen en duda esas reglas básicas que consiguieron, con todas las críticas, la posible introducción de las masas de la población española con una cierta expectativa de vida al medio largo plazo. They stop following representing those people and they start respecting the rules of that pact between citizens and democracy. Si quieres lo hago luego resumes muy rápido. Ok. Eh, la idea es, ¿qué ha pasado en España? En España hubo algo que se llamó el 15M, que son los indignados, que fue la crisis de régimen, pero por abajo. ¿Qué hizo el 15M? El 15M lo que hizo sobre todo es poner en duda el relato oficial que hasta ese momento se había dado sobre eh, la crisis. La crisis era para las élites un efecto meteorológico, algo que sucede sin explicación eh, y solo con víctimas, pero sin culpables. The 15M was the movement that said that it was enough. It was the movement who said that the, it was the moment to, to start changing, to start taking the power from bottom up and start changing the, the, the rules that we're not respecting anymore from, from, the, from, from the politicians. Se da, por lo tanto, una politización de la sociedad. Lo que antes se vivía de manera individual, en soledad, y que cada uno se lamía solo las heridas, se convierte en algo político. Si te echan de tu casa, ya no es por tu culpa. Si estás en paro, si sufres la precariedad, ya no es por tu culpa. Hay razones colectivas y hay soluciones colectivas. Then what happens is that people start stop complaining in their private lives and start complaining in their houses and they start joining together and discussing about what was going on, how to change the things and if they are killing ki kicking out of your house, you have the right to discuss with your neighbor and you, start the, you have the right to go into, into demonstrations, go to the streets, doing politics on the streets from the basis. Por lo tanto, Podemos no se puede explicar de manera aislada. Podemos lo que hace es surfear la ola creada por la, por la sociedad en movimiento, por la sociedad moviéndose y la sociedad impugnando la palabra oficial, el relato oficial de lo que sucedía y de lo que puede suceder. Podemos lo que hace es hacer preguntas y decir que el status quo no es el que follow. El status quo es posible cambiar. We can change the status quo. Okay. Podemos. Okay. Y ya, muy, muy rápidamente, para, para terminar. Sí, y después vuelvo, vuelvo contigo. ¿eh? Así que... ¿Cuáles son las claves de Podemos? Una, el marco izquierda y derecha ya no sirve. First key of Podemos. Left and right is not, in, is, is not anymore the only dimension of discussion in politics. It's not working anymore. La frontera para entender cómo unos pocos, una minoría privilegiada, acumula cada vez más poder en menos manos. How to understand that the minority is the one who is taking all the power, taking all the decisions from the majority, from the people. Entendimos que había que mover esa frontera. We understand that this is enough. Y a partir de ese momento dijimos, no es izquierda y derecha. No more left and right. Es arriba y abajo. It's bottom up. Hay una mayoría empobrecida que sufre la crisis. There are thousands of millions of citizens that are suffering, they are poor, they don't have jobs. Que algunos se llaman de izquierdas, pero otros no. Some of them are from the left, but some of some others not. Y sufren mantienen una indignación no articulada que consigue lo que consigue podemos es tratar de darle voz a esa indignación popular que no se adscribe a una etiqueta. And they are frustrated, they are indignados, podemos dar But Podemos gives voice to all those um, who said basta, who, say, who said it's y, y enough. Para, para terminar. And to close. And to close. Eh, Podemos utiliza la idea de casta. Aquí la conocéis mucho en Italia, la idea de casta. Pero de una forma articulada, ideológicamente distinta, creo. Podemos uses the word casta in a different way that Italians do. La cuestión es... A different way. Okay. They, they use it in a different way. They don't use the word casta in the same as Italians. La cuestión yeah. es, los, los políticos elegidos por la ciudadanía ya no responden a la soberanía popular, se han emancipado. Politicians are not responding anymore to sovereignty, to popular sovereignty. They have said they are not doing it anymore. They have revealed from their job. Y por lo tanto mantienen un estrecho lazo con las élites financieras. Por lo tanto, han secuestrado la democracia y han secuestrado la decisión de la sociedad. Y en este momento es cuando el propio Parlamento, históricamente liberal, 
se they convierte... Have, they have kidnapped democracy in Europe, and they said that it's enough, um, and, they, and they keep following financial institutions' decisions. Solo defendiendo los, los derechos humanos, la Declaración Universal de los Derechos Humanos, ya se convierte automáticamente en un elemento de radicalidad democrática. Just defending human rights, it's an yeah. element of being radical in democracy. <laughs> Thank you, Jorge. Thank you for what you just said and for the hope that Podemos um, is conveying to the rest of Europe, uh, the uh, sense that it can be done, si se puede, um, that is, uh, was expressed in Spain, but thanks to what you're doing, it becomes a possibility also elsewhere. Yanis and I will now switch to uh, the English language. Shana, so that we can then wrap up the evening, and I uh, will need you for this as well, so don't think you can leave just yet. Um, and my question is this, um, two points from what Jorge's, Jorge has been saying. The first, to respond to the question of the difference between left and right. You have said repeatedly that uh, DiEM is a transversal movement that welcomes uh, Democrats of all sorts, and I think I would like to ask you to clarify what you mean by that. And uh, a second question, I will ask both of them at the same time, is the question of uh, who is the people of, of Diem? Podemos has been built on the incredible experience of the Indignados and of the 15M. Large-scale mass mobilizations in the squares, without which uh, the experience of Podemos would certainly have been very much more difficult and perhaps less meaningful. Where is the social power, the popular power, that you're counting on uh, in the process onwards with uh, DiEM? The distinction between left and right will always be pertinent as long as there is capitalism. Nevertheless, in Europe today, we have neoliberals that demand of a government, the Greek government and other governments, to increase corporate tax and increase VAT when the left-wing government is fighting to reduce them. At the same time, we have left-wing governments that are reducing pensions in order to comply with the Troika. The distinctions have been crushed by the ironclad will of the Troika not to impose neoliberalism, but in order to ensure that the current power structures remain intact, as even though they are through increasing doses of authoritarianism, imposing policies that are destroying the ecosystems, even these powers require to survive. So Diem is not left-wing or right-wing. I am a left-winger, but I would love to see in Diem all sorts of Democrats coalesce in a coalition in order to stop the slide into the postmodern 1930s that are in front of us. Who are the subjects of Diem? Those people. Europeans who understand that united to stand, divided, we collapse into a postmodern 1930s. Luciana, io, io ti chiederei di rispondere a quanto hai sentito e chiudere. Luciana, can you answer the question which was asked here? Uh, well, many people, uh, well, my grandparents uh, talked about Europe uh, as a peace project. How are you telling about uh, Europe to your grandchildren? Well, the Europe was built uh, as a result of Cold War. Could you, could you just use a different microphone? Well, you should tell your grandchildren that the Europe that was built uh, was built that way because it was a part of the Cold War and had nothing whatsoever to do with the people that thought about Europe and dreamed about Europe in Ventotene. But let me conclude on a point uh, about what Yanis said. We should ask ourselves the following question. Why that we are the 99% whilst the others are just 1%? We never seem to be the winning, the winners. 
uh, well, it, uh, well, we could say it's easy to say, no, I don't like this and I can uh, denounce it, but it's very difficult to ensure that there is unity on a project uh, the, if we want to change the situation, and that's why we keep being defeated. So let's be very careful. I don't think it's enough to just think about rights and transparency. We must uh, ensure that we get some power, decision-making power, and uh, I'm not saying that we've got to take the Winter Palace, uh, as was uh, what happened in Russia in 1917. And I, don't, and I say that it's not enough to have uh, 60 or 65 percent of votes to be in charge, but uh, we do get, have decision-making power. If we organize society through the unions, uh, direct democracy bodies, uh, which starts uh, the uh, mindset of people. Uh, uh, so that uh, sort of the uh, and the opposition may sort of retake some of the roles that have been expropriated by the government. So I'm saying this just to say let's beware. Let's not simply ask uh, that we uphold the human rights. Human rights are crucial, of course, but we need some power to sort of ensure that they're being upheld. Uh, so let let's not. Uh, make the mistake about that, uh, what's happening in Europe uh, with the support of many theoretical sort of uh, advocates is that of thinking of Europe of citizens, a Europe of individuals. That means that they would only think in terms of rights without the actual decision-making power to implement those rights, fulfill those rights. Uh, there were European movements. It's not true that there weren't movements in Europe which were strong. We had the peace movement, and we had the World Social Forum. We have a movement on water and common goods uh, which were pursued. What we failed uh, to achieve is to consolidate uh, such uh, power structures having a real sort of ability to intervene.